hello hello so i want to talk to you really quickly about two things number one god wanted you to be married and then number two um if you are divorced and you want to get remarried i want to encourage you on today hello everyone this is going to be a short video let me take my title in here real quick um many of you know i've been doing a series this last couple of days uh called god wants you married and i'm gonna stay in this vein for a little while um because number one you all need some encouragement <laughs> number two you need more than just somebody to pray for you is what i have what i have found um, number three, there are a lot of myths and misconceptions about whether God wants you to be married or not in these last days. And I want to open up with this. I want to open up with for you to consider that there is an attack on the marriage, right? There's an attack on the family. Now, we know this if we just look at society and where we are in today's generation. If we look at the divorce rates, of course. If we look at the absent fathers in the home, of course, and if we look at the absence of the Holy Spirit in the homes, let's talk about that as well. Um, if we look at the rate of single moms, I'm a single mom too, by the way, so this is definitely no condemnation here. Um, if we look at the rate of people going out and just getting uh, sperm donors and not being married and then advertising it on reality TV as if that's cool and that's how we should be operating. If we look at the rate of Christians that are deceived and think that it's okay to marry a Muslim, uh, Christians that are deceived and think that it's okay to marry a man who don't know Jesus Christ at all, um, Christian women who are deceived by men who step forth and twist the scripture, they twist the word of God to make it fit what they want it to say in their lives and to make it fit what they um desire and and crave even if it is totally ungodly and if it is not in alignment with the kingdom of god the will of god or the word of god and so we can see that there's an attack on the marriage now you know here's one of the things that you want to understand about this attack when i set my phone up <clears throat> You are a part of the attack if you have had thoughts go through your head that maybe God does not want you to be married. And there's a reason that you have for that, right? If if you have been fed um, the teaching that everybody who wants to be married ain't going to get married. Or just because you desire to be married doesn't mean you're going to be married. Or... This is what I used to hear a lot, probably about 10 years ago. I used to always hear this. I, I had not heard it, but I just saw somebody post this the other day. The Bible doesn't promise you marriage. If you have heard those kind of things, then I want you to know that you are personally being attacked concerning your call to be a married woman. Why do I say that? Because the will of God is... For us to be people who are fruitful and multiply. And I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that for right now. Because many of you know I started a full-blown Bible study series. Which I'm giving you a plethora of scriptures. A plethora of foundation. To help you to confirm, solidify, be encouraged. Never question it again about whether God wants you to be married or not. And um, I'm going to be back. So I did part one on Sunday. That replay is on YouTube. My YouTube page is Sarita A. Foxworth. I'm going to be back with part two on Friday. Also, I'm going to only stream that live on YouTube at 12 p.m. Eastern. So, but for right now, I want to keep it as simple as possible for you. And I want you to understand that God's original will for the woman and the man <laughs> was to be fruitful and multiply. To replenish the earth. To subdue it. Okay, let's keep let's just keep it very basic on today. Don't ask me what about this, what about that. Just let's just focus on when God created the first husband and wife. What was the very first instruction that He gave to them? And God created the man in His image, 
and he told them to be fruitful and multiply. Okay, so let's just start there. Let's not make it more complicated than that one today and just stay with me. Now, thank you for the compliment, Kayla. In order for us to be fruitful and multiply, we have to get married and have babies. Why does God want us to do this? So that he can have a family. Do we all understand that we are children of God, that God is our father, and that any father wants a family, preferably. You know, there's some baby daddies out there that don't want no kids, okay? But a the spirit of God is love, and he needs a, a oh, what's the word I'm looking for? He needs a focus of his affection and of his love. And so, therefore, God wants a family. That's why we are his children we are his sons we are his daughters the only way for him to have a bigger family and to have more sons and daughters is for us to be fruitful and multiply for people of god who love and worship god to get married have babies and teach our children in the things of god and so with that being said there is an attack on that there is an attack on god's original intention and purpose for his creation you and i do, are y'all with me so far? So I want you to just, while you're listening to these words, I want you to just disregard all of the attacks that have come across your mind, all of the things that you have been fed, all of the myths that are circulating, all of the negativity, anything that comes to discourage you from the fact that God wants you married. I just want you in this moment to only focus on what I am saying to you. Now, do any of you dispute what it says in Genesis chapter 1, I believe verse 28, that God originally intended for man and woman to be fruitful and multiply? Nobody really disputes that, but we like to graze over that and make up excuses for why God doesn't want people to be married, which is crazy. But that's exactly why I'm here, okay? It's the whole reason Sarita A. Foxworth is called anointed and chosen so that women of God can be, women of God can be in faith. And to actually go ahead and get married. Now, God wants us to be fruitful and multiply. You got to get married and have babies to do that. If, if the majority of single women, there's a lot of single women in the body of Christ today, right? If the majority of single women listen to the myths and the lies that are being perpetuated and really believe, oh, if I desire to be married, maybe God, that doesn't mean I'm going to get married. And I don't know what the will of God is for my life. Everybody. Uh, and then it's like, so what you're saying is that the majority of us should be single women. But you cannot give me a biblical example of a bunch of single women running around filled with the Holy Ghost doing all these amazing things for the Lord. What you will find is a bunch of married women. You'll find a couple of stories about some widows. And then, of course, you see the stories about the, the harlots. <laughs> but you do not see, because if that was the case, right, if that was the case, there will be a lot of biblical examples of unmarried women giving glory to God. And God's saying, daughter, be like this woman, this woman, this woman. I want you to be an independent, unmarried woman. And I want you to serve me. Well, we do not have a lot of those Bible examples. Therefore, that should also let us know that God's intention for the majority of us. Now, I'm not saying every single one of us, because Apostle Paul did say that there's a gift of singleness and a gift of marriage. But I'm going to be quite honest. If every woman has a period in the cycle, I believe every woman is supposed to be getting pregnant and having babies. And the only way you're supposed to do that is after you get married. And so, therefore, who's supposed to be single? Because why in the world would God make you go through having a whole period if he didn't want you to have no babies with your body? That's a whole nother topic. So, I'll say this. I'll, I'll, I'll just say this. The majority of people in the body of Christ have to get the marriage, not to get the singleness. You will never hear me perpetuate the attack on the on the very establishment and the will of God to be fruitful and multiply by telling people just because you want to be married don't mean you're going to get married. Because that message, it has zero faith. It has not a lick of faith, not a droplet of faith. It ain't got no faith. You can't find no faith in that statement. Can you? You hearing that maybe just because you got a desire to be married doesn't mean that everybody's going to get married. Does that encourage your faith? Does that strengthen your faith? Does that help you to believe in God and trust God? It does not. 
my goal here is to help every single woman that is connected with me to focus on believing God. Do you know when you study the life of Christ, he said to his disciples over and over again, how much longer will I suffer with you? Have faith in God. How many times do I have to tell you this? Have faith in God. Why are you shocked at this miracle? Have faith in God. What do you mean you couldn't do this and I got to come and do it for you? Have faith in God. Jesus said that over and over and over again. And I say unto you today, have faith in God. Now, I've been getting contacted a lot by women who have said I'm divorced. During this series, during this series right here, God wants you married, which is why the topic it is, is marriage after divorce. I've been getting emails. I've been getting DMs. I've seen comments. I've been divorced before. People are telling me that I'm not supposed to get married again. I got an email that says um, I was told I should not get married again after two divorces. And here's what I say to that. Does God still want you to be fruitful and multiply? Or does God now say, because you have gotten divorced, die single and miserable? Any person that has gotten divorced more than once, they obviously want to be married. The same scriptures that apply to those of us who have never been married apply to those of you who have been married before. And there's a lot of them. Now, I have, I have posted those scriptures on my page. I'm going to do a full-blown teaching into those scriptures on Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, by the way. But all the scriptures, all of the Bible stories, all of the biblical examples of how God wants women of God to be married and to have babies, it applies whether you have been divorced or not. Because sometimes you got a divorce and it, it won't be your fault. So what happens if you get married and then you get divorced but it was not your fault? And now what? You supposed to be punished? And you're never supposed to have an Ephesians 5 marriage. You're never supposed to be able to enter into a God-glorifying marriage and have blessed children and raise them in the things of God with a man filled with God's spirit. That doesn't sound like a loving, gracious, and forgiving father, by the way, who said he, he throws your sins as far from the east from the west. God ain't remembering a whole bunch of sins that people do. So to say that somebody, because you got a divorce, you can never, ever get remarried again, that is also an attack on the marriage. That is a direct attack on that woman and her faith. That is a direct attack on that woman, her faith, and the babies that she might give birth to after she gets remarried. This is an attack on God's original intention for us to be fruitful and multiply. So therefore, if you're looking at my eyeballs right now, you have been divorced. Does God want you to get married? Yes. You believe God wanted you to get married when you married that first person. Hopefully. I don't know. Because you could have been, you know what I mean? You could have got married young. You probably didn't know no better. You see, stuff like that. When you when you marry the wrong person young and you didn't know any better, God is not holding that against you. God is a loving father. He doesn't hold anything against us. The sin that people live in today. You think you sin because you got divorced. There are people doing all kinds of things behind closed doors. And go in the pulpit and preach. Okay, none of us are perfect. We all fall short. And that does not change the fact that God wants you married. Now, the third time prayerfully will be the charm. Everybody who contact me have been divorced twice. It's, it's so interesting. Um, even the person who, who DM me, she's like two times. She told me her whole story. I don't care how many times you've been divorced. Hopefully, though, you will learn some lessons and you won't make the same choices that you made to end up in that situation again. Meaning, even if you married the wrong person and it wasn't your fault, that person ended up being, you know, just a horrible human being to you and there was no way you could stay married to them, right? Um, even if you marry young and you just didn't know any better, you know, hopefully now you do know better, you'll make different choices concerning who you date and give your heart to. And then when you do get remarried, it will definitely be to a man of which you can have an Ephesians 5 marriage with. All right? Now... What scripture is it? I'm going to ask this and then I'm going to go because I got to go. Women, if you are divorced and you're looking at me right now and you were concerned that God would not want you married again because you're divorced, what scripture are you basing that on? Can you tell me? Because I don't know what it is. I, I'm pretty sure. I could probably Google it. But tell me what scripture that is that you're basing that on. That once you get divorced, you're not supposed to get married again. <clears throat> What scripture are you basing that on? Or are you just basing it on what people say or how you feel? I know that somebody very close to me was like, um, the Bible says that if a woman leaves her husband, 
she's still married to him. And what does it say? If she remarries, she'll be an adulterer or something like that. I think there's a scripture that says something like that, but I'm not sure. Um, are there any divorced women looking at me right now? Because if it ain't, I'll move on. I have made my point. All right, let me see what the comments are before I um even God considers us his bride and said that a lot about marriage. Mary was married before she gave birth. Ninety nine percent of the women that got used were married, even if they were used by God, they were still married. Deborah yeah, they, they were all married. All of the Bible examples, the only woman who wasn't married was Prophetess Anna, but she was a widow. So she was a widow. <laughs> Every Bible example that we have of a woman who was used to do a work of God, she was always married. And the thing about it is that people will say, you're supposed to be married so you can serve God with all your life, right? And um, what I always say is that after I get married, I'm going to continue to serve God. It's not like I'm going to get married and then I'm, what, never going to open my Bible, never going to preach another lesson, never going to teach God's women. No. I'm going to get married and I'm going to continue on this path. Now, I do understand that what Apostle Paul was saying, because when you get married, you got to split your time. You got to split your time, your, your effort and your energy with your family now. Your husband is going to need you. Your children are going to need you. And then your marriage becomes your first ministry. I get it. Totally understand that. At the same time, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be in my purpose anymore. Because you and I both know plenty of married ministers, like women in the faith, who are... On their post, they're still operating in their purpose while they take care of their husband and their children. So it's not like you have to choose. You know what I mean? You don't choose God or marriage. You can also, you can have both. And by the way, there is an anointing. There's an anointing to be single and unmarried. This anointing will have you to have peace, patience, and uh, not to be uncontrollable horny while you are unmarried. There's an anointing to be single. There is an anointing once you become a married woman, an anointing to take care of your family and take care of your uh, business and your ministry and serve the Lord all at the same time. That's what Proverbs 31 is talking about, that marriage anointing. That's how that marriage uh, the marriage anointing looks in action. You can accomplish everything that God wants you to accomplish with grace. Um, and then, of course, the anointing as an unmarried person is what we see in Apostle Paul's life. But, um, yeah. Let me see if y'all gave me any scriptures. You was on the wrong account, girl. It's okay. The replay is up there now. You'll know you're on the right account when you see the replay. <laughs> Whoa. She said, being a single mother is crazy. It is not. It is hard. It is for the birds. I'm like, oof. <laughs> I love my baby. God knows I love my baby. Lord knows I love my child. But at the same time, I'll be like, oh, Lord, where is the... I need some testosterone up in here for you because... What, what, what is the scripture? Leviticus. Leviticus 21 and 7. Let me go read that real quick. Oh, I got eight minutes. I'm going to read the scripture real quick. And you know what? Okay, let me see if I can do this real quick. Because I asked for the scripture, so I do want to read the one that you guys give me. Wait a minute. Just give me one. She is one busy lady. Which scripture is it? Because you're divorced. You're a divorced person? I, I want you to answer me if you're divorced. And if you have a scripture that you think is causing you to doubt whether God wants you to get married again. I don't want a bunch of random scriptures being thrown up here. That you're just googling i really want one that because if there's if there's a if you take the y'all know you can take the scriptures and you could use them incorrectly you can interpret them incorrectly you can apply them incorrectly you can forget about the context and the culture and the history that stands behind the scripture oh she separated I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to say um um not discounting yours okay i'm not dis discounting yours um but you're separated and i'm in uh sarah is divorced so my intention here is really to um make sure that i am encouraging women who are actually divorced and you know and anybody else so i'm, I'm not discounting um, what you're going through at all 
please don't take it that way. So, 1 Corinthians 7, it says, But for those who are married and have a community because of me for the Lord, a wife must not leave her husband, but if she does leave him, let her remain single, or as we reconcile to him, the husband must not leave his wife. Okay, let's read the full chapter real quick. 7. Okay, verse 10. Those who do, do, do. Now, I will speak to the rest of you. Uh, so I say to those who aren't married to widows, it's better to stay unmarried. But if they can't control themselves, you should go ahead and remarry. But it's married in prayer. But for those who are married, I command them to go ahead and leave them. Blah, 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 blah. It, it says in verse 11, but if she does leave him, let her remain single. Oh, because it because people think that that means that she shouldn't get um remarried again and the husband's not his wife. Okay. Now, okay, all right, I see this, I see this, right? Now, I have to, I will have to do some more research into this to fully understand it, you see, because what I don't want anybody to do, and this is what I do not do either. I don't read a scripture and then just take it, some scriptures you take at face value, but then there's some of them where it's like, is that really what he's saying? Because this is the same book of the Bible where it says women got to have their head covered and sit on a separate side away from their husband. You know what I'm saying? Like this is the exact same book. He was talking to the church of Corinth when he said stuff like, you know, don't braid your hair. So, I mean, you have to under you really have to study and understand the context and what he was talking about and who he was talking to. Um, I will have to look into that some more. And actually, I think I am going to look into that some more because I'm calling to women of God that want to be married. And I'm going to I'm gonna do a deeper study just for you, for those of you that are divorced. I am going to do that. I don't know when I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it because I haven't done that yet. And that would, be, um, that would be good for me to study for you and to learn as well. And then it would be good. It would really be a blessing to you if I just talk straight to you. Read it in context of what's going on during that time. Yeah, exactly, um, Brianna. So I really have to see what the, I have, and then you got to read like the whole chapter. You have to read the original words, the original language, make sure something didn't get lost in translation. There's a whole study that needs to go into it because uh, I do not believe, and I will not believe that if you are married to a man who's abusing you, you're supposed to just stay married to him forever. Like that's so stupid. You can't tell me that God is a God of love, but he wants you to stay in a horrible state. Let's say he's not abusing you. Let's say he's cheating on you left and right. Women in and out the house. He got love children all over the place. You supposed to stay married to him? How is that a God of love? Like it, So to me, to tell a woman that she can't get remarried if she leaves a situation like that, is to say that God don't love her. He Clearly, he hates her. Clearly, God hates her because I'm not seeing the love here. Um, and any father, okay, so even when we when we think about God as our Abba Father, any father would not want their daughter to stay in a crazy, miserable situation, and then if she chooses to leave, any father wouldn't say, I'm glad you left that situation, but now I just want you to be on your own for the rest of your life. Like, it just literally, it just doesn't make any natural, practical sense. You, you understand what I'm saying? Not when we serve a God who loves us. So, I'm going to look into this some more, though. And I want you, um, if you are watching the replay of this and you have more scriptures, go ahead and send them to me. But I'm going to do a full um, study on this. I'm gonna, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a fuller teaching. But for right now, what I want you to be encouraged with is this. God wants you married. Okay? God wants you married. All right? God wants us to be fruitful and multiply. Period. But what is the problem here? Because it's taking a long time. So what? I put this in my email and I'll say this again. If it's taking you a long time to get married, like it's taking me, you are in good company because every single person in the Bible had to wait a long time until they got a manifestation of the greatest desire. Hannah didn't pray and get pregnant the next day. Abraham didn't get a vision from God and Sarah got pregnant the next day. Noah didn't hear from God, build the boat, and then the rain came the next day. Esther wasn't just born and then all of a sudden had a great work to do and did it the next day. Like, there was all kind of stuff that took place. Ruth didn't even get, since everybody loved to serve Ruth, Ruth didn't marry Boaz. Boaz was her second husband. For those who, oh, that's a good example. For those who think you shouldn't get remarried. Now, granted, her husband died, but still, that was still her second husband. Um, Let me see. I sent a whole list. Jacob. How long did Jacob have to work and serve until he can get with... What's his wife's name? Rebecca? Wait, what was Jacob's? Uh, wait, no, it was Isaac and Rebecca. 
Jacob and Rachel. David, how long did it take between when David was anointed and when he became king? You are in good company if you have heard from God, if you have prayed to God for anything. And it's taking a long time to get manifestation. Just read the Bible and you will see that that is the way it works. Nothing happens overnight. That is the way that it works for everybody. Okay. So just because it's taking a long time doesn't mean God changes his mind and that he don't want you married no more. Be encouraged. Be encouraged that God wants you married. And I will see you on Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern on YouTube.